Thank you, John. Um, hi, everyone. I know I've met a lot of people in here, and I hope to meet the people who I haven't met yet um, before the end of today. So I'm Deb Goodkin, and I'm the executive director of the FreeBSD Foundation. Um, we're the main sponsors of this event um, with, with NetApp. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about um, who we are and what we do and, and some of our plans going forward. And then I'm going to hand it off to Ed Mast, who is our senior, direct, senior director of technology. And he will um, talk about what we've been funding in the technology group, because over half of our, um, our funding goes towards that group. So, um, so I'll start a, a little bit about me. I wasn't going to do this, but when Andy was just talking, Andy from ARM, um, uh, it just it triggered something way back in the olden days for me when um, I was a firmware engineer doing, um, oh, you can see the little Slack thing, so hopefully that won't be um, distracting people. <laughs> um, I don't know how you don't have that happen, but anyway. Um, so, so I used to be a firmware engineer in the storage um, industry, and um, and so we used ARM processors. And I always remember, like when we'd use a new processor, then ARM, the ARM team would come, and we would have like days of getting trained on their processors, and we would go home with these like humongous manuals. And I actually still have some of them on my bookshelf at home, and so. Uh, so when he talked about the documentation and in reference to something earlier, it just like triggered that memory. So, so anyway, so that's, that's my background. Um, first, I want to start out with a big thank you. I do want to thank NetApp for providing this venue. I think it's incredible. People have told me that they've been really pleased with the setup. Uh, we can spread out. It's, people are really comfortable. Uh, the food has been great, and, um, and I want to thank Ann Dickinson, who is our marketing director, for um, doing most of the organi organizing for this event um, in coordination with the other uh, folks on the uh, summit committee. We usually we meet weekly for all of the vendor and, and de developer summits that we put on throughout the, the year. Um, and then I, I really want to just thank everyone here. You are users of FreeBSD, you're contributors in many different ways. And so thank you for coming, and really just thank you for everything that you do. So, but thank you, I mean really, uh, you know, we're a community, and so um, that leads me into this, this ecosystem that we like to share to show the different areas or components or parts of um, you know, our ecosystem, and it's from you know, the actual operating system, which we run on our computers or in our products or data centers. It's our community, it's us, it's the people who, who do all of this. And, um, and then it's the FreeBSD Foundation, and we're the ones who, um, we're a separate organization, we're actually a corporation, and our whole purpose is to support you and, um, and the project. And so um, yesterday, Greg, if you heard his talk, he had this quote in here, and he said, it's not the source code, it's the source of the code. And so I was thinking about that, and I was thinking, I actually changed it a little bit, and I said, it's this, this is the source of our product, because it's not just the code. It's FreeBSD is a product, and on, um, and it's more than just code, it's documentation. And, and we're known for having really good documentation, um, advocacy that there's so many people out there advocating uh, for FreeBSD. So this is many ways that people contribute. So in this example, this is a developer summit in uh, Brussels. And, um, and so these folks are, some are committers, some are um, contribute source code and documentation and just different ways that they contribute. Um, collaboration, you have one, these two people, I don't know if you recognize them, um, the guy on the right is actually one of the original um, developers uh, or founders of Beehive and 
uh, and this was a conference in Australia that I was at, and um, I was just taken a sort of blown away by their relationship and the the guy on the left is actually he was a he was like a newer he would refer to himself as a newer ports committer and he was just sitting there just absorbing so much from Peter and it was awesome to watch they really enjoyed working um, together teaching that uh, we hold workshops and this workshop is, is pretty typical as far as this is in Southern California. And um, it was really a full room of people who were interested in learning about FreeBSD. And we had Roller who was actually teaching the workshop. We have people who advocate for FreeBSD by doing these fun and cool videos. And so I look at it as teaching as well as, as training and advocating for FreeBSD. So that's who we are. This is, this is how we contribute to FreeBSD. So who are we, the foundation? Well, we've um, been around since 2000, and uh, so for 23 years, so a very long time. Um, I've been with the foundation for 18 years, so I have been around uh, with them for since the, almost the very beginning. Um, we are a 501c3, and Greg explained the differences between a C a C3 and a C6 yesterday. And so we, our purpose is for the public good. We support the project, we do support commercial users, but we, hold, we support the whole ecosystem. Uh, we're based in Boulder, Colorado, so that's where I'm from. And our founder, he um, also lives in Boulder and that's why we're based there. And, um, and we're also 100% funded by donations. And so we always wanna make sure people and, and companies understand that because all this work that we do, um, that's the only way that we can fund it. And we have a staff of like really passionate uh, people who are very connected to this community that I was talking about. So this is a little window into who we are. We're very small. I like to say we're, you know, we're small but mighty. I know I'm not the only one who's used this phrase, but we have folks on the team uh, this is our full-time staff, um, Ed, who's here, Caustic, I'm sure you've heard, he does a lot of the x86 um, software development work. Uh, Lauren Gorkowski, who's in the back, who's our administration manager, you've probably dealt with her for uh, donations and travel grants and things like that. Uh, Pierre, who's uh, stepped in to do a lot of the user loan work. And uh, Lee Wen, who does CI, and then uh, Joe, who's doing project management and just stepping in so many different areas uh, to support us. Drew Gorkowski, who's uh, doing a lot of our social media as well as writing how-to guides for getting new people to use FreeBSD. Um, and I mentioned her earlier, uh, who does um, um, all the advocacy work for us as well as organizing events like this. And then Greg, who you met yesterday when he gave his talk, he's new. Uh, he's one of the newest uh, people on our staff. And, um, and like he said, it's, um, since he's joined, it's been action-packed having him on staff, and it's been awesome. And when I say awesome, it's because we, so about a couple years ago, we really started growing, and uh, we brought Ed on board full-time, we brought on a few other uh, staff members full-time, and, um, and we've really viewed this as a step from being sort of a scrappy organization to you know, a much bigger organization that could really step in and support the project. Um, and now I see a different phase at where we're at. Who I have up here right now, uh, these are our board of directors. Uh, we do have a small team right now, and, but everyone brings in experience from all different areas, from uh, open source, uh, Andy, who just gave us talk, from the ARM perspective, as well as he's also involved in a lot of different op other open source projects. Uh, Justin Gibbs, who is our founder and also our president still, and um, who actually, um, he, he hopefully you heard his talk yesterday. Um, and since he's been at Meta, um, it's really opened his eyes to what we can do from the things that he's been exposed to, like uh, more modern tools and things like that. Hiroki is actually here uh, from Japan, and um, and we have folks like academia too. So, so all over the, the place. Um, 
So if you look at, I know this is a busy slide, these are really the areas that we support. And I'll just highlight each area. Um, and, and the idea, this is to give you an idea of, of what we do. And also help you know to, um, you know, how we can help you too. Because really, you're, we're a nonprofit, you're our constituents. And, um, and so we are also looking for input from you on ways that we can help uh, previously as well as the project. And actually having a summit or event like this really helps inform what we do too. So starting at the top left, we do project development work. And this is, Ed will go into more detail. We do have a staff of software engineers. We have, um, I have not like 10, oh, I had it on the uh, previous slide. I think we have about 10 contractors right now that we work at, with. A lot of them just step in and fix bugs right away uh, so we can fix things quickly. They implement features and um, they do uh, code reviews and, and all sorts of different support. Uh, we have two staff members on the security team and um, I, it, it, every so often I see the little slack bubble go up and so it's, <laughs> for me it sort of cracks me up but it, hopefully it's not a distraction uh, for you. I, could, I wonder if I should take a break and restart this. I guess it, it, it's okay. Um, we do have two staff members on the security team, so, uh, so we do have resources available um, to make sure that, um, you know, errata goes out quickly and just people, folks are on top of it. We also have uh, Gordon, who's a security officer who's actually here, um, basically contracted to under us. Um, uh, quality insurance, we have uh, Lee Wen, who's doing continuous integration as well as looking at ways to modernize and improve the testing uh, of the code. We do support the uh, infrastructure for EBSD and so um, that's all managed by cluster admin and, um, and so what we do is we have one person on staff who works with cluster admin to make sure that we are serving them with what they need. So we actually just spent $85,000 to um, upgrade uh, the ser uh, many of the servers in the infrastructure. Um, we also have one of our team members who's actually on Cluster Admin. So, um, so we're there to help with, with, um, with hands. We also pay for hands on too at the, um, the co-location facilities. And helping with onboarding, this is an area that um, actually Ed will cover um, in his talk on what we're doing to try to smooth that out, make it more efficient. Um, advocacy is a big area that we do support, and that's from uh, giving presentations at conferences, that's from uh, providing um, market or um, content on presenting like the features of FreeBSD and why you should use FreeBSD, and, um, and some of actually the uh, slides that Greg shared with you yesterday, and, um, and we really want to expand on that. Um, training and education is something we're working on. Um, I'm working on um, twisting Doors' arm right now from, um, <laughs> got his attention, uh, from Netscaler uh, and helping us with providing some um, educational material. Maybe I'll try to recruit um, Kirk too, so we'll see who. And then finally, um, we can represent the project um, as a, a legal entity, so that's signing NDAs and um, other types of legal engagements. So some of the areas that uh, we recognize are, that's really important, one is getting more young developers involved with FreeBSD. And so we've done it in, in many ways, but two key ways that, um, or areas that we're involved with, one is Google Summer of Code, um, and that has been a great program for us to get um, young people um, introduced to FreeBSD as well as getting committers to our project. And so we've been part of this uh, program since the very beginning. And every year you have to apply and we never know if we're gonna get accepted because they have a ton of applicants and we do and they really support what we do. Uh, and so here's just some of the um, the recent GSOC program we went 
through with some of the key uh, features that the students, uh, some of the students worked on. Uh, the other program is the University of Waterloo uh, co-op program. And they have a really, uh, I think it's a really cool program where they do, it's a four-year program, um, but it's spread over five years because you have to do um, six work terms. And so it really allows the students to not only get, you know, the, um, the, you know, the standard type of university education, but also go intern for different companies. And so we've had 17 students um, over the time that we've been involved in that program. And we've had, um, I don't have the stats here, but we've had a few that we've uh, continued um, um, employing uh, through internships, as well as one who stayed with us as a contractor now that he's graduated. So another area that I want to highlight to you, um, so this is just a screenshot of our new What is Free BSE page. And so we do, you know, how do we decide what to do? There's so much to, that we could do to help the project. And so we, uh, what we do is we take input from like events like this, um, from a lot of the work that Greg has actually stepped in to do. So that's from meeting with those, the 20, uh, commercial users that he mentioned yesterday, finding out, you know, why do you use FreeBSD? What are your um, pain points? Um, why are you thinking of using FreeBSD? Why maybe you're hesitant? Um, and so he's, he's providing all that feedback back to us. Um, back in Coimbra for EuroBSDCon in September, uh, Greg also ran a SWOT analysis with the attendees at the uh, Developer Summit. And that was the first time we've ever done that. And that helps identify, like, what do we think, we as a community, think are our weaknesses, our strengths, our opportunities. And so, and then you, you plot it out. And so we actually got really good feedback on that. So we're using that, too, to inform uh, what we're going to do going forward. So, uh, so we get information or input from like, things like that, as well as the other, one other thing that Greg had talked about yesterday was um, the enterprise working group uh, that he's been heading up. And so that's been providing a lot of input too on what we should do to make sure that FreeBSD just works in the enterprise um, you know, market or use case as well as just a, the general purpose use case. Because uh, filling those gaps will really help uh, make FreeBSD a great uh, pro in, um, operating system for uh, not only those applications, but other ones too as the foundation for those. So the reason why I have this screen up here was, um, was actually input from a company who uses FreeBSD, and they said, uh, you know, we, we always need to uh, explain to our vendors and customers why we're using FreeBSD. We think it's great. And, uh, but we would really like you to expand on that information on your website so we could send our, you know, customers and vendors to your website and sell them on it. And so we actually put together this page that really goes into more detail. And when I'm at the end, I'll actually show you um, the web page that you can go to that actually has some of uh, Greg's uh, slides that he had from yesterday. And we put it in one area so that you can send your customers, your students, your, you know, anyone that you want to, um, convince to use FreeBSD, because at the end, you're, the takeaway, we hope, is why wouldn't everyone use FreeBSD? So like I was talking about uh, earlier, I talked about how we get all this input. We, get, we have um, so many different areas that we want to support, but we do have to narrow it down and look at what's going to be the most impactful to the project. And so th these are some of the areas that we're focused on, and Ed will actually go into more uh, detail when he comes up here on things that he's looking at in his area, sort of the themes that we're following. And really, if you think of it like as themes, then it's, uh, I mean, because I, I, I'm not gonna go through this whole list, but it's really you know, increasing the adoption of FreeBSD, getting more uh, individuals and, and companies out there to, to use it. But we're focusing on, you know, on key markets uh, right now. Also, um, getting more individuals using FreeBSD. And so uh, we're working on a, a college program that will introduce 
uh, students who are interested in computing and hopefully operating systems um, will get them involved, sort of like our internship program, um, where we're going to develop training material, uh, how, to con you know, how to contribute a patch, how to become a developer. And it's going to really help um, develop a program to bring not only on uh, college students, but everyone else, the, the ideas to help make like the installation and getting started with FreeBSD much smoother. So people want to stay with FreeBSD. Um, as far as advocacy, a couple of people brought this up yesterday. I think Justin and, and Alan did um, that we need to increase our, you know, our advocacy and our visibility of FreeBSD. And we recognize that, and so that's an area where um, we are going to provide more technical content. We're going to talk about like why FreeBSD. What's so great about some of these technologies that are in FreeBSD, like DTrace and Jails and, and ZFS, things like that. And, um, and both at, for technical and, and non-technical people, too. And, and broaden, um, you know, to broaden the awareness of FreeBSD out there, work with people who can help us make FreeBSD more visible to a broader audience. So that's, that's one thing we're working on. And then the last thing here is really um, you know, strengthening the relationships that we have with commercial users, with individuals, and really be there to help, help folks. So just to get you an idea of how, how do we fund all this work, um, this is our history, our financial history, just in a nutshell, income versus expenses. And you'll see that um, yeah, we've been sort of steady, steadily growing over the years, but uh, for us to fund the efforts that I'm talking about and that Ed will cover, um, it takes a lot of money. And, um, and that's why I'm showing this to you. And, um, and I know that there's a lot of companies here who have given us money um, and, and consistently too over the years. And, um, and if, you know, if, if you can help in any way getting the word out to help us get more funding, that would be great. Um, the other way that you could really help, I know uh, yesterday Greg had his request on, um, you know, asking your vendors and customers, you know, what are, what's your FreeBSD story? But what I'd like to ask is, um, is share your story and uh, do it in ways like uh, provide a testimonial, a case study, write uh, an article. We have actually the FreeBSD Journal here. Uh, it's professionally published. And, um, and so you can write about your use cases um, for this here. But, but help, help shine a light on FreeBSD, and that will really make a significant difference. So that is my talk. And um, there are a couple things that I did want to make sure that I included here um, from, from our marketing was just that. So the, new, the journal, the new issue is coming out, I think, today or tomorrow. Um, we're also converting it to HTML. This will take time. But we're trying to make it, I mean, these articles are amazing. And, um, it's, and each issue that comes out is full of so much uh, information that people, what we really want is people to be able to search on Google and find these articles. And right now, it's, it's very difficult to do that. So we are uh, making the effort to convert everything um, to HTML. And um, also, a community survey will be coming out. And this is another way to inform um, what we're doing, what we should do. What do people in the community, and this is outside of developers too, uh, you know, what do you want and what's important to you? And, um, and that's, that survey is in, in conjunction with, uh, with the core team. <clears throat> so we've worked together on like, you know, what are our goals of the survey as well as what are the questions that we want to ask. So that will be going out, um, I think it's in a week. I'm trying to remember right now. Um, and so that's all I have. I just, I want to, See if anyone has questions. We're open to answering questions. If there's anything unclear about what we do, or how do how do we decide what to fund? 
Okay, everyone feels like they have a good sense of what we do. Okay, so now for the test to make sure. No, I'm kidding. Uh, okay, so now what we're going to do, actually, um, so before I open Ed's presentation, I wanted to share that new uh, web page uh, with you. And I'll, okay, we'll close Slack. I know you can all see this. Um, so, uh, so this is at, on our website, FreeBSCFoundation.org, and uh, URL is, well, you'll find this from the menu uh, if you go to uh, FreeBSD Project, and then what is FreeBSD, and that will take you there. And so, um, so some of the, the information we have is what I shared. Some of the information um, that we have here is uh, what Greg shared yesterday. Uh, and what we try to do is just break out what are the, you know, the, the, basically the key selling points of why you would want to use FreeBSD. And then down here you'll see, um, so we are pulling out, having more technical information about some of these uh, key, feature, uh, key features that I talked about earlier. Uh, we're still growing this and still writing content, so not everything's here. So these links actually take you to the handbook right now. Uh, talk to you about companies that are using FreeBSD. Uh, really show this, um, you know, where FreeBSD stands out and how all these new firsts that we have. And one thing also I'd like to point out too when I, when I see this, the fact of bringing new people in to the foundation, and I think this is the same with, with the project, is that when you have new eyes, they see things that maybe you just you don't see anymore, and um, you know it's like living in a beautiful place and not recognizing how beautiful it is because you see it every day. And so, um, so have, bringing someone new in who actually recognized these firsts and put together this information for us um, is really helpful. I mean, it's helpful to us, helpful to the project. Um, and it's helpful to companies to really see how FreeBSD, we've been around for 30 years, and, um, and it's still innovative, secure, stable, all the things that people talk about. And, um, and we're looking to make sure going forward that uh, it not only stays that, but it's, you know, it's a leader in different areas and it's innovative. And like what Andy was saying, that that's gonna be, you know, that, that's going to be one of their solutions. I forgot how he he phrased it, but you know, FreeBSD will be ahead, or they'll be integrating everything into FreeBSD too. So anyway, I did want to just share that with you, so you see that we have that available on our website. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand it off to Ed, and um, let's see here if I can find. I'm doing this without. Okay. Oh, start from the beginning. And then, and so one more thing right before he starts, and I'll, I'll switch off. But, um, but I brought. I think we had about. We, we brought a lot with us because we want people not only take these for you know yourselves, um, but also to share these with uh, your colleagues at work. So please feel free to. We do still have, maybe have twenty left, and so. So it's not only that we're trying to get rid of our swag, like John was saying earlier, but really we want people to have this. It's, I don't know if you've looked at it, but it does have a timeline poster in the center, which is really, it's, uh, I'm not gonna open it here because there's a staple, but, um, but we put a lot of work into that and it's actually really cool. So, so please make sure you take some for your colleagues. And I will hand this off to Ed. So I'm Ed Mast, and I have been working for the foundation for about a decade um, now, and uh, started sort of part time, and for the last several years um, have been employed full time managing the technology group. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit about projects that the foundation has funded um, and 
some things about where we're looking to go. Um, so here's a uh, graph of commits that have gone into FreeBSD that identified the foundation as a sponsor. Um, looking here from 2022 on, um, if you extended further back uh, earlier, you'd see um, a lot of growth kind of leading up to the consistent level um, of sponsored commits that, that are, are here, um, at least in the source tree, which is blue. Uh, and that corresponds very, very much with the funding um, that, uh, if, that we looked at from Deb's, Deb's graph, basically. Um, for the last many years, um, we've been able to really increase the amount of direct funded projects that the foundation takes on internally. Um, and over time, it's been, our focus has been historically uh, focused on the source tree. Um, so the blue uh, commit counts there, you can see that that's really where um, our full-time staff, contractors, project grants um, historically have been focused. But if you look, uh, the red bars um, over the last uh, couple of months um, have been uh, extensive, we've, we've done some extensive work in the ports tree. And I'll talk about that uh, in a moment when I talk about the contractors and staff that we, we do have. Um, and then uh, the little yellow bar there for doc commits. Um, there's, a, there's some sponsored doc work from the foundation, but that's something else that I'll touch on in a little bit. Um, and the graph on the right, I think, is a really interesting um, uh, and important point that just shows the breakdown of, um, this is looking at all sponsored commits um, in FreeBSD um, over the last year, and basically what portion of commits that identify a sponsor have the foundation as the sponsor. Um, and it's, it's a little bit over a third, basically, of sponsored commits um, that are going into the source tree are coming from the foundation. And of course, you know, this is, um, it's a little bit hard to measure exactly what that means in terms of the quantity of work. Um, commit counts, you know, some commits are small, some commits are big. Uh, but I think the, the point is that the foundation has, um, is in a, p a position where we are consistently contributing technical work um, across a, a wide variety of components in the, the source tree. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about the staff that we have. Deb touched on this, but uh, I'll go over some of the things that um, folks work on. The staff that are on here are essentially our full-time um, foundation employees or, uh, or full-time contractors. Um, and so I manage the technology group overall, um, look at sort of facilitating our roadmap planning and where we are, uh, we're looking to, to go, um, as well as some direct hands-on uh, technical work. So I work um, with the security team. Um, and I do, I do hands-on work in the tool chain um, and a few other uh, build infrastructure areas, things like that. Um, and then Joe on here is um, our project coordinator, so he handles a lot of the day-to-day -day, um, aspects of the projects that we're working on, and in particular, the project grants. Um, so we fund uh, full-time and contract employees kind of on a long-term basis, and then we also fund individual project grants where typically someone proposes an idea to the foundation that they want to be able to work on for some period of time, um, and Joe manages all of the, those aspects. Caustic is a long-term, or a long-time, rather, contributor to the foundation, um, and is, is one of FreeBSD's x86 low-level experts, and also uh, the VM system, and uh, LibC, and uh, RTLD, and Lib, Lib THR and all kinds of uh, uh, areas. Caustic works on quite a lot of um, a lot of things, and I think having that capacity within the foundation is um, is very sort of important to be able to provide consistent, sustained uh, uh, effort on things that maybe don't generate a lot of um, uh, a lot of noise, but. Um, consistent bug fixes, consistent kind of just improvements, um, making th sure that things keep working well. Uh, Lee Wen is primarily focused on CI, but covers quite a lot of um, uh, quite a lot of things. Lee Wen also works um, with the cluster admin team and was instrumental in doing all of the heavy lifting in FreeBSD's transition to Git. Um, so setting up the um, setting up all of the infrastructure and, and um, all of the 
the kind of uh, behind the scenes work to make that happen, um, along with uh, community members who, who did uh, who worked on the, the conversion process and things like that. But Lee Wen was instrumental in getting the, the server infrastructure and everything set up for that. And Lee Wen also uh, works on our images for Azure. So Lee Wen built a lot of the, uh, and worked closely with Microsoft to get a lot of the infrastructure in place so that those images are, um, are automatable and built, um, uh, built cleanly and uh, so that they can be handed off um, and just be built as part of the regular release engineering process. And then Pierre, um, we brought Pierre on primarily with a, a desire to focus more on kind of end user, user land applications. We, we've historically had kind of a focus on uh, the source tree and especially the, the kernel, the source sys uh, subdirectory um, within the foundation. So Caustic, for example, is, is very much um, you know, a, a deep low level kernel um, engineer. And so Pierre's, uh, our goal with Pierre was basically to be able to have the foundation look at more end user facing um, things. Uh, it turns out though that F Pierre's first task was updating OpenSSL to OpenSSL 3 because that was a key thing that was holding up FreeBSD 14. Um, so we had Pierre uh, take that on initially. And that also goes to, um, um, where, well, I'll get to that in one second. Uh, it also goes to the, um, uh, the increase in ports commits that we've had over the last couple of months. Um, so that's Moyne, who's on a slide a few slides ahead, um, who did a lot of the work to address fallout from the OpenSSL update in the ports tree, uh, as well as uh, fallout from LLVM imports. Um, contractors on here, um, these are people that we have on a long-term, um, but not necessarily full-time uh, basis. Um, so uh, John, for example, as you uh, all know quite well, um, uh, John has a, a contract with us um, to be able to step in for areas where there's a very specific uh, technical domain uh, expertise. So things like beehive security vulnerabilities, if there's something you know, that we need to be able to address in a timely fashion, having that contract in place means that we can buy a little bit of John's time to, to fix something that's, that's really timely without having um, someone on a full-time uh, basis. And then Mitchell Horn, um, Mitchell was my co-op student several years ago, um, has now graduated um, and has an occasional, um, uh, occasional contract with us. Mitchell works on RISC-V in FreeBSD, um, but also uh, Mitchell is doing quite a lot of improvements to the documentation, uh, making sure that our developer documentation especially is, is up to date. Um, Bjorn works on uh, the Wi-Fi stack in FreeBSD, and I'll get to um, another comment on uh, uh, Wi-Fi in just a second. And then Mark, um, Mark was working uh, on a more consistent basis with the foundation, um, but we still have him on an occasional contract so that he can contribute uh, across multiple areas of FreeBSD. And anyone who's involved in, in FreeBSD knows uh, Mark fairly well. He works on quite a lot of things and uh, I think is doing a very good job at kind of trying to drive uh, a lot of things forward. Um, here we have some contractors who are more specific project focused um, and I won't go into to everyone but um, uh, I'll mention uh, Moyen as I said was uh, instrumental in fixing a lot of uh, issues in the ports tree. Um, we've brought uh, Cheng on um, to work with Bjorn on improving the Wi-Fi stack, um, making sure that we can try and make progress uh, more quickly than we have uh, in the past. Um, and then we have individual project grants like Robert here, um, who's working on some uh, SIMD, uh, libc routines, optimized versions of things like mem, uh, mem copy and, and things of that nature. Um, Olivier also I'll mention, um, We've brought Olivier on to, uh, to work on a variety of, of different things, um, but he's um, eventually going to look at things like tuning, uh, automatic uh, uh, system tuning. Um, a lot of the, the tunables in FreeBSD are, um, are sort of set from default, or set based on the environment from quite a long time ago, um, and uh, being able to, to automatically uh, scale those things as your memory or CPU count or, or such goes up is uh, something that's going to be quite interesting. Um, and uh, Olivier has had quite a few commits into FreeBSD in a few different areas uh, uh, 
um, already of late. Um, and then echoing what Deb said, I'm not gonna touch on everyone here, but um, this is uh, some of our, uh, um, these, these are some of our interns who worked for the foundation um, this last uh, summer. Uh, I'll mention Jake um, specifically because capsicum is something that is uh, very um, important to, to the foundation that we've funded for quite a long time and, and Jake worked on um, uh, some tooling to improve the, the process of applying capsicum to applications, but also uh, bringing in a capsicumized uh, or capsized uh, syslog D. Um, so I'm gonna talk about a few projects that we've, um, that we've funded that are either uh, complete or, or nearly complete. Um, this is one online uh, RAIDs at expansion that has uh, been a long, long time coming. Um, the foundation funded this project several years ago um, and we got about 80% of the way there with um, uh, Matt Aaron's, um, but we weren't able to get it kind of completed for, for a, few, uh, a few different uh, reasons, but it is extremely close now to being in up to landing in upstream ZFS. The, um, uh, it's been, uh, been reviewed by uh, open ZFS experts um, and the comment here, I, I pasted this in last night, so it's four days ago now that the comment here was added, but uh, we're, we're basically, I think, days away at this point of it landing in um, open ZFS upstream, after which it will make it into an open ZFS release and into FreeBSD uh, with the next import. Um, Wi-Fi has uh, been a long-standing uh, effort for us, um, limited somewhat by the, the time that Bjorn has had available, and so that's one of the reasons that we wanted to bring someone else on to, to work with Bjorn and try and move a bit faster here. Um, but uh, this includes uh, Intel and Realtek drivers um, using Linux KPI, um, and our primary goal from here is uh, bringing speeds to where they're um, uh, reasonable for uh, the, the, current, uh, the current era. Uh, these slides all have a, a link to um, the uh, foundation's project site that talks a little bit more about the, the specific projects. Um, WireGuard, this is uh, an example of a project that uh, we funded John to do. Um, and basically, the foundation stepped in because we wanted to make sure that the WireGuard, um, uh, the, the WireGuard module in, made it back into FreeBSD, and, and everyone was um, was happy and comfortable with uh, with it. So, John's first task was to um, to make sure that Open Crypto in the kernel provided all of the uh, uh, crypto primitives that WireGuard required, so that we weren't uh, using sort of a bespoke implementation that came with the WireGuard uh, module. It was uh, it's standard infrastructure that's in FreeBSD. Um, and then just uh, code review and kind of shepherding the, the uh, integration efforts to get it back into the tree. And so it's in 13.2 and in, in 14. Um, Beehive, uh, this is an interesting um, item because uh, Andy's talk mentioned Beehive ARM64 work uh, as well, and it's the same uh, same developer, Andy Turner, um, worked for the foundation at, for a while um, and worked on uh, ARM64 Beehive uh, for us, but also Mark Johnston is working on some of the aspects of, of, six, of getting the 64-bit uh, ARM support into the tree. Um, and this is, so this is a, definitely a collaboration between multiple parties. This work started um, at uh, University in Bucharest um, and has been uh, continuously kind of updated and ported forward and uh, is finally at the point where it's, um, it's there, there's a very clear line, line of sight into getting it into the tree now. Um, and then, as I mentioned, John working on security issues to get reported in Beehive and getting timely fixes for them. Um, LLVM, we've funded uh, quite a bit of work to improve the debugger uh, in, LL, in LLVM LLDB. And it's essentially at, uh, at parity with, um, with GDB. Uh, John may, may have uh, some comment on that. But, but LLDB is now a usable debugger for FreeBSD, um, both for user land and kernel. Um, we funded work to do the base uh, kernel infrastructure um, for that. And a uh, GSOC student over the summer, uh, one of Li Wen's 
um, GSOC students uh, implemented module support for LLDB, which was the final um, kernel module support. So that was the final piece um, remaining to be able to use LLDB as a kernel debugger for FreeBSD. Uh, security, uh, as, as I mentioned, we definitely have a strong interest in security from the foundation, um, funding some of my time uh, on the security team, and then development efforts, um, like bringing, uh, uh, sys bringing Capscom into syslogd, uh, Jake's uh, summer internship, as I mentioned. Um, Caustic has worked a lot on vulnerability mitigations, and um, we're definitely interested in participating in the Cherry ecosystem, um, you know, as it sort of, uh, as it transitions from being research to um, widely deployed, we, we definitely take an interest in participating in that. Um, we continue to support efforts on tier one CPUs um, uh, and, and also non-tier one CPUs, but uh, tier one being x86 and ARM 64-bit, uh, uh, at this point, um, for FreeBSD 14, uh, we did a bunch of work to increase the maximum supported CPU count to 1,024 as servers uh, from uh, uh, x86 and ARM servers uh, become available in the market um, uh, with more than 256 CPUs, which was our, uh, our limit in earlier versions of FreeBSD. Um, it, we, we funded the effort uh, to address bottlenecks and increase, um, uh, increase hard-coded limitations um, that prevent us from going past uh, 256 CPUs. Um, there's a bit of work that follows on from that um, to be able to assign interrupts to all of those CPUs. Um, that work is, uh, that work works for Intel um, today, but not AMD, and so we, we need to address that. Um, and then also RISC-V general support from uh, Mitchell's, uh, Mitchell's efforts. So this is, um, that's sort of the end of where I wanted to talk about what, uh, a few highlights of some of the projects we've worked on, but I wanna talk a little bit about sort of where, where we wanna go and where we wanna invest our efforts. Um, and one of the things I think that we, in the foundation we really wanna support, and this is sort of, um, uh, in discussion with um, the core team and, and others just as we try and figure out where we're gonna invest, um, I think we really want FreeBSD to be the best environment for someone who's new to systems programming, like a, a, a student who wants to learn about systems programming. Um, we want FreeBSD to be the best environment uh, for that to happen. And so here I've, I've listed some of the things that, that need to come out of that, right? Um, uh, and so, you know, the. The, the, you, you only get one, one, uh, one chance to make a first impression. And as soon as we have a hiccup in the FreeBSD process, uh, the installation and the very first user experience, it's very easy for someone to get tripped up over something and decide that FreeBSD just isn't for them or it's too much work or um, and to just give up. And so I think it's very important that, um, you know, basically from the time that you decide you want to give FreeBSD a try, to the time that you're sort of committed and you're willing to overlook the flaws and or fix them, um, that, pro that, that needs to be uh, very, very smooth. And so that's the installer and um, hardware support. Um, you know, we wanna make sure that there's a set of laptops um, that people can, that you can choose from and, and know that FreeBSD is gonna work, your wireless is gonna work, sound is gonna work. When you plug your headphones into the headphone jack, it automatically switches to, um, to those headphones. Um, and so the, um, the images that are on here are um, actually some of the, the candidates that we're looking at for this. So there's uh, a couple of ThinkPads here, lots of FreeBSD developers who use, um, use a daily driver FreeBSD laptop are using ThinkPads. Um, there's a couple of Dell uh, machines that are, are of interest for, um, for various reasons. The framework laptop is, is interesting just because of the way that that ecosystem uh, is developing and the approach taken by, um, by the company and we've had some, some good in discussions and interaction with them um, when we've run into FreeBSD issues on the, that hardware. Um, and then there's also a Mac down here in the bottom and lots of, um, Lots of FreeBSD developers uh, use Macs as their, their daily drivers, and that's, 
you know, for better or worse, it is what it is. Uh, I'd love to have FreeBSD be usable as your desktop environment uh, for everyone, but um, we also, I also want FreeBSD to, to work very well if you are using it in a VM, if you're using a Mac as your primary uh, environment. I really want to make sure that it's a, a smooth and uh, productive experience. And so we really want to be able to have good tooling um, so that if you're a new developer, um, things are well documented and you're able to, to do things like profiling your code, debugging your code, and understanding what you're working on. Um, and then just some other, uh, other things that we're, we're interested in, in focusing on. So um, we really need to make sure that uh, uh, we have consistently produced artifacts that um, you can take the latest FreeBSD and install and, and try it out. This, this, uh, I was very interested or very encouraged by Gleb's uh, talk this or add-on talk this morning. I think that is something that's um, you know very very much dovetails with uh, areas the foundation would like to focus. Um, and so that's uh, that's basically um, the extent of what I have to present uh, present here. Um, definitely, the foundation is you know. Events like this are, are very good for getting uh, feedback as we try and look at where we're going to invest and, and where we are going to um, uh, focus our development efforts. And so the discussion that, that uh, Gleb prompted this morning was, is very, very valuable to, to drive some of those um, uh, discussions. And we've also, in collaboration with the core team, have been looking to try and understand kind of what is the project's roadmap um, what are the, the things that the project feels um, are the core team uh, and the project sort of um, via the core team um, uh, feels are important for us to invest in over the next, next year or two years. Um, so with that, I'll uh, take any uh, questions and then over lunch, uh, I'm happy to have further discussions. I've got a plant in the audience. Yeah, pr I promise it wasn't a plant. <laughs> I, maybe Ed's going to beat me up after this one. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, something that I'm interested in, I think that the audience would be interested in, and something that you and I have kind of talked about on and off, and that was embedded a little bit in some of your points, but clearly FreeBSD is a community-driven software project, right, and has been for a, a long time, you know, as long as any thriving open source project has been probably. Um, and, but you know, you look at that chart that you shared where the FreeBSD Foundation is now, you know, contributing a significant percentage of uh, the sponsored commits into source and in increasingly into ports as well. <clears throat> so I know that there's a method to the madness that, you know, sort of in terms of considerations What's the right thing for the foundation to be doing? You know, how do we fill the gaps? What are the considerations that go into deciding this is an area where it makes sense for the foundation to, to, to be involved? Um, so I'd just be interested in <clears throat> hearing your thoughts uh, on that topic. Yeah, I think that it's a really good question. Um, you know, how do we decide what we are going to fund? And, and more importantly, how do we decide where we're not uh, investing? Um, and I think there's, there's quite a few different things that feed into that. Um, and so one, one principle is that our, our primary goal is not to kind of supplant work that is happening within the community already. Um, and so, you know, if, when, when companies um, have an area of, of specific interest to them and, and are developing um, features and, and improvements for FreeBSD, um, and working with upstream uh, to get those features in. So, you know, I, as an example, I can I can talk about the network stack uh, improvements that come from Netflix. Um, you know, that's something that the the foundation really doesn't need to invest in um, because that is the, the the FreeBSD community, whether it's um, a single entity or multiple uh, contributors within the FreeBSD community, are driving that forward and and keeping FreeBSD in a very um, uh, competitive place. And so. Um, that's something that the foundation, you know, doesn't really need to, to, to focus on. 
Um, what we do focus on is gaps that are not getting addressed by the broader community or areas that, um, uh, areas that really um, have sort of benefit across um, FreeBSD users, um, but are not, uh, don't rise to the level that a single entity would um, be willing to fund by themselves. And so a lot of things like developer tools really fit into that category, right? Um, it's, it's expensive uh, and it's a lot of work to have a really good development, in, development environment. Um, and it benefits everyone in the FreeBSD community if we have good tooling, if we have good performance uh, tooling, good debuggers, uh, good tool chain, good compilers. That really benefits everyone, but no one wants to dedicate a, a huge amount of, of money to that because it's, it is expensive and, and um, it, it really is something I think where the foundation has a really good role to play and kind of do things that broadly benefit um, uh, everyone. Um, Definitely as far as kind of roadmap decisions go, events like this are, are really good for getting feedback. Um, you know, uh, meetings with, um, with companies, um, the enterprise working group that uh, Greg heads up is very useful for getting feedback um, about areas that um, are broadly of interest to multiple, um, multiple FreeBSD users. Um, and I think one of the interesting things is you know, we have good representation um, often from the sort of vendor community, pe people in the FreeBSD community who build products on FreeBSD um, or even if not building a product, sort of use FreeBSD as an input to something they're producing. Um, and I think uh, efforts like um, the Enterprise Working Group are really good for us to get feedback from people who are using FreeBSD as uh, a commodity server, right? They're, they're using FreeBSD in the ways that um, OSs have been used for a long, long time. Um, and I think um, that's, that's an area where um, we haven't had a, as good of a source of feedback um, compared to the, the vendor community um, of, of late. And so being able to get that feedback is, is really, really valuable. Um, and then with the core team, uh, you know, we get feedback from the, the FreeBSD community um, sort of as a whole to to inform our, uh, our areas of focus. Well, so it's actually time for us to break for lunch. So why don't we go ahead and uh, take our break now and we'll come back at 1.30. Uh, if you have more questions for Deb or Ed, I'm sure you can hit them up during lunch and ask those. So we'll break for lunch now. <laughs>